second slide on Poisson, mainly looking at the inverse. Before I do that, though, a quick mention of a couple of little facts. For the mean, this is a bit of a notation thing. On your calculator, you got the lambda figure on the right. Um, no, on the formula sheet you have that, but in the calculator you have the mu, uh, the u. Okay, so that's two symbols for the mean. They're exactly the same, so they're completely interchangeable. For the standard deviation, okay, and that's this will be a slightly familiar looking little symbol there. We simply square root the mean. So if the mean is four, the standard deviation is two, uh, and the variance would be four. So uh, that doesn't come up a whole lot, but it is noted, and we expect to have that in the back of our brain. It did come up on a question in 2015, um, and we'll look at the end of the topic at deciding whether a particular distribution fits you know, the model, and this is one of the tests you can use to decide whether it actually fits a Poisson. If it does, that will be true, but we'll come back to that later. The main thing is looking at inverses for this clip. Now, there's a bit of a quirk to the Poisson formula that uh, we can work out the average if we know the probability of there being zero occurrences of an event. So the inner workings with x equals zero, in the formula, you get the mean to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero equals one. We know this from year 10 maths. On the bottom line, you get the factorial of zero, which curiously also equals one, so the formula when x equals 1, we're just looking at 0, no, x equals 0, and we're looking at the probability of no occurrences, is simply this. Now, it's still not necessarily attractive, but remember, e is actually not a variable. It's a fixed value. 2.71 is a reasonable approximation. Um, and negative lambda looks sort of freaky, but that's just negative of the mean. Now, there's a little bit of rearranging from that line to this line. If we know the probability of zero, we want to be able to find the mean because then we can answer any probability question you th is thrown at us. We undo E with a thing called the natural log, which is the logarithm of E. Not really your worry in the course, but what we do is we take the negative of the natural log of that probability. So this pumped up looking line in blue is the thing we need. The mean will equal the negative of the natural log of the probability of zero occurrences. Let's see what that looks like in practice in a question. So e.g. back to the accidents in the intersection but it's a new intersection or different. If we know the probability of one or more accidents occurring, missing my ing, in a week at the intersection is 0.7769. Okay, what is the probability of exactly four accidents in a week? Now, if it's a Poisson distribution, you can't do anything until we know the mean. All right, so first, if the probability that there is zero accidents, x stands for the number of accidents per week, we go one minus that, that's one minus the probability there's one or more accidents, which is the information we were provided in the question. So therefore, the probability of zero accidents is 0 0.2231. Now, we go to the big blue statement, and we can use that because the 0 0.2231 is the probability of zero occurrences. So we reach for a Casio. The mean is going to equal the negative natural log of 0.2231, and boom, here's your mean. 1.5, an average of 1.5 accidents per week. Once we have that mean, we can answer the question. What is the probability of exactly 4? Well, that's okay. We go to our calculator, the PPD, because it's a particular value. We see it equal x equal to four accidents and mu equal to 1.5. So there's an average of 1.5, and we plug it in and we get this probability here. Now, the work in these questions is actually done at the reading level. 
if in an assessment you can read it and spot the type of question, you're away. We do have to remember this little trick, which if you do, don't do calc, you just have to trust me on. You use that once you know the probability of zero occurrences, you find the mean, and then you can answer any question, and the examiners will love you for it and treat you to a really good grade. Okay.